Thank you very much. So uh, in this project, we used a mouse model to look at the interaction um, of nitrate supplementation, this PPAR alpha knockout, um, and hypoxia, and the effects this has on skeletal muscle mitochondrial function. So hypoxia, um, it's a condition where you have an insufficient supply of oxygen to your tissues, something you experience upon exposure to high altitude, and in certain disease states where oxygen delivery to your tissues is impaired. We're particularly interested in the functioning of uh, skeletal muscle mitochondria in these conditions. And it seems to be uh, a general consen consensus that oxidative processes are attenuated. So you have um, a decrease in kind of your uh, beta oxidation and Krebs cycle functioning. And this loss in mass specific function is uh, followed by a loss in mitochondrial density in response to longer term exposure. So we're interested in looking at ways we're able to um, attenuate this hypoxic induced stress. Um, and for this, we're looking uh, into nitrate supplementation. So nitrates can be gained in your diet through um, consumption of green leafy vegetables and beetroot juice. It's reduced in a stepwise fashion in your body to nitric oxide, which is a ubiquitous signaling molecule. It has a number of effects, including vasodilation, um, but also um, has been shown to improve metabolic efficiency. So it's gained uh, quite a lot of interest uh, with regards to sports nutrition, where um, supplementation of dietary nitrates have been shown to improve um, exercise tolerance and um, exercise efficiency, and also decrease VO2. So in uh, rodent models, supplementation of dietary nitrates has been shown to attenuate um, the in loss of beta oxidation, so enhance beta oxidation in both normoxia and hypoxia. And this was something that was shown to occur via PPAR alpha. So this is your, pro, uh, your PPAR alpha is um, a master regulator of um, fatty acid oxidation. So it controls um, expression of various enzymes involved in beta oxidation and transport proteins as well. Um, it seems to play quite a key role in hypoxia um, as a hypoxic inducible factor, master regulator of your hypoxic response, has been shown to affect um, the levels um, of or the activity of PPAR alpha. So in the study, uh, we're looking at the effects of hypoxia on skeletal muscle mitochondria function, whether dietary nitrate supplementation might be able to alleviate any um, attenuation of your mitochondrial function, and whether um, it's doing this via PPAR alpha. So our hypothesis was that dietary nitrate would preserve skeletal muscle mitochondrial function in hypoxia uh, via PPAR alpha. So we had a mouse model um, of SVEV129 genetic background. So we had um, a PPAR alpha gene knockout and also a wild type group. Um, so the mice were six weeks of age before we began uh, any study intervention. So we had um, seven days of either dietary nitrate supplementation, which was 0.7 millimoles of sodium nitrate, or um, 0.7 millimoles of sodium chloride, which is our control. So this preceded a 28-day exposure in either normoxia or uh, hypoxia, and the hypoxia was um, quite severe, so it was a 10% um, oxygen exposure, and um, this was reflected in the haemoglobin concentration, which was uh, shown to double in our mice. So the dietary nitrate consumption was uh, continued throughout the whole of um, that exposure. So we then uh, collected tissue, and... Um, we were looking at soleus muscle and um, we did mass corrected mitochondrial respirometry on this muscle. So um, we measured oxygen consumption by the mitochondria in response to addition of substrates using a Clark type oxygen electrode. So we performed a three way ANOVA to look at the interaction of our three factors, so our hypoxia, nitrate, P par alpha, and we performed um, a post hoc Tukey's test to look into um, any significance identified through the, uh, for, through the uh, three way ANOVA. So just to give a little bit of uh, background to our mitochondrial respirometry experiments, so we permeabilized our, um, so sorry, we separated our slayer's muscle into fiber bundles and then we permeabilized these bundles using saponin. We then added these to a, um, a closed-off chamber, and then uh, we added various substrates to simulate specific pathways in the mitochondria. So we did a couple of different assays. The aims of the first assays was to look at um, metabolism via beta-oxidation and also um, carbohydrate metabolism. So we added parmesan carnitine, the long-chain fatty acid, um, and this was first of all added without any ADP. So any mitochondrial oxygen consumption was due to um, leak of proteins back across the membrane. So without any ATP generation. We then added ADP. Uh, so this enabled um, your protons to pass through ATP synthase and generate ATP. So this is your oxidative phosphorylation state. 
We then uh, added pyruvate and measured uh, pyruvate oxidative phosphorylation state as well. So our second assay uh, was more looking into the complex function of mitochondria, so we added glutamate, which predominantly goes through complex one. Again, we measured the leak states without any ADP, and then we added ADP to measure uh, oxidative phosphorylation. We then uh, inhibited complex one using rotenone, and then added succinate, which goes predominantly through complex two. So on to our results. Um, so first of all, I'm just going to look at the genotype difference between these two mice, so the effect of this P per alpha knockout. Um, so our results, so you have your JO2 on the side, uh, which is oxygen flux. So um, a decrease is indicative of a decrease in mitochondrial um, oxygen consumption. And um, we have the treatment condition on the bottom here. So these are chloride mice and they're in normoxia. And um, we have our wild type on the left hand side and our knockout on the right hand side. So what we found was that uh, knockout caused a decrease in the leak state uh, for long chain fatty acids and also for electron transfer system complex one. Um, and sorry, these bars are, um, so it's minimum to maximum values and the middle bars the median. Um, so we found this difference in leak state, but we didn't find um, any change in oxidative phosphorylation state. So that's the genotype change. So next up, the effects of genotype and hypoxia. So this time, uh, the blue bars are um, indicative of hypoxia, so you can see that through the plus sign here as well. So we found hypoxia, as we kind of expected, was um, it caused a suppression of a number of measures of mitochondrial function. So first of all, long chain fatty acid leak state was found to um, decrease. And this was occurring in both the wild type and the knockout mice. So this occurred with um, oxidative phosphorylation state of long chain fatty acids. Also uh, pyruvate oxidative phosphorylation state and electron transfer system to oxidative phosphorylation. Um, so with all of these, um, this decrease was again found in, in both the wild type and the knockout, suggesting it's not something that's going via PPAR alpha. So next, um, the effects of the nitrate treatment on top of this. So we found um, the dietary nitrate supplementation to alleviate um, a few measures of, um, oh, sorry, a few aspects of the hypoxic induced suppression of mitochondrial function. So first of all, uh, long chain fatty acid leak state. So I've already shown you this decrease that we saw. Um, so this significant uh, line here. Um, and then the dashed lines are with the nitrate supplementation. And what we can see is this um, significant decrease in the hypoxia isn't occurring with the dietary nitrate supplementation, suggesting that dietary nitrate is recovering um, that suppression. And this is again happening in both the wild type and the knockout groups. Um, interestingly, in this graph, um, the knockout groups the um, recovery through dietary nitrates isn't quite to the same extent as you see in the wild type group, although that wasn't significant. Um, so it kind of suggests that maybe um, if there, there is a compensatory mechanism coming in here, it's not having, it's not recovering it to the same extent as when p per alpha is present. So the same um, pattern occurs with pyruvate oxidative phosphorylation. So you see this hypoxic induced decrease here. Um, and with the dietary nitrate supplementation, we didn't find a significant decrease, again suggesting that dietary nitrates are recovering this hypoxic-induced suppression. Um, and this is occurring again in both genotypes, so um, in your wild type and your knockout, suggesting it's not something that's dependent on P per alpha. So nitrate doesn't seem to be acting through P per alpha to cause this effect. So in summary, um, our results show that hypoxia suppressed mitochondrial function in both genotypes and that nitrate partially recovered um, hypoxic suppression again in both genotypes. So in conclusion, um, in mouse soleus muscle, nitrate appears to recover hypoxic induced suppression of both pyruvate and long chain fatty acid oxidation and this seems to be occurring um, uh, independently of P per alpha in these conditions. Um, so we're now sort of looking into what else might be happening here. Um, so it might be that nitrate is acting by, by increasing um, skeletal muscle blood flows. So nitrates are a strong base dilator, as is hypoxia. Um, although if this was happening, I'd perhaps expect some more global um, alleviation of the hypoxic induced suppression. It might also um, occur through p par beta delta compensation. Um, so for both of these, we could look into gene expression changes. So we're um, hoping to look at um, whether p par beta delta is upregulated, up and also perhaps if um, vascular endothelial growth factor is upregulated, which might be indicative of this increased um, skeletal muscle blood flow. Okay, thank you very much for listening.
Mm, have you taken any questions?